so when you look at the spring film, mm -hmm. what were the biggest takeaways in terms of your agenda for, for fall camp? That we have long ways to go. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's encouraging that, that we do have some talent. But, um, but far from the standard that we believe will take us to the next level. So now the camp is, you know, is the not an opportunity for us to to get there, but very encouraging. In terms of buy-in from players, buy-in, yeah, just a culture fit. Like you leave scheme out of it, is, that's that's part of the last worry we have right now. Is just can we get these guys to buy in and believe in us? You know, and, and the same thing return favor, us believing in them, and they did a great job. They're they're, they're trying to change the habits of. You know, conform to what we expect and um, it was very encouraging it was good. Did anyone stand out to you in terms of progress physically, really taking advantage of the summer and, and, and doing what they needed to do? I, I think the report coming down from Coach Ryan and his staff was very, very good. So um, you look at all the you know, we have goals for them from, from weights and from the knowledge of the game and and them showing up on time and everything else, it, it, it was, it's heading the right direction. And so, you know, to pinpoint one guy, it's probably, I think the whole group is heading there. You know, we're still, we're not perfect, but um, like, guys like Peely, you know, they're, 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 they're bought in, they're trying to get it. And they're not there yet, but that's, thank goodness we have whole camp. Someone earlier mentioned Peely as a guy who can take a basketball turn and dunk like it's not a problem. Have you have you seen his maturity start to catch up with? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he's athletic. You, know, you have to tell him he's not a basketball player. He's not a volleyball <laughs> player. He's a, he's a D tackle. You, you know, you expect him to play. So, um, just trying to get his mindset right. And you match that with his talent and his skills. You got something special. What's the biggest question you have about your group going into camp, or what are you most excited to see over the next couple weeks? Um, I'm excited to, just to see them be more consistent. And again, not scheme, just the level of play that we believe that is necessary for us to win. You know, and then um, excited to see the depth. We want to build that depth as deep as possible. So, and there's some young guys over there that I want to challenge them to push for that depth because uh, we all know we need it. Can you talk about using Thule? Um, there's a bunch of different places where it looks like mm -hmm. he, can, he can make plays. Would you prefer to mix him up, mix things up as time goes on, or, or do you think eventually he ends up finding a home that ends up being where he goes? His home is all across the line of scrimmage because he has the... He has the, the knowledge to do so, and then the skill set good enough to do it. So we're not going to park him in one spot. So we'd say maybe it's more about which other guys yes. end up stepping up. You'll, that's, you that's just where you'll put Tuli, yes. essentially? Yeah. The solo Tuli does a great job, and Tuli can move somewhere else. You know, so it's, it's, you got to put the best guys out there. That's, that's the bottom line. We can't say he doesn't have the size, he doesn't have this. the best guys out there, the hungry guys that will go after the ball. And then just uh, kind of shifting gears at Pac-12 Media Day, Lincoln kind of made it clear that recruiting has changed so much with NIL and the fact that, just to put it honestly, there are schools making choices that other schools are not making. Mm -hmm. In your experience, have you had to deal with that at any level or do you kind of punt that away? And, and you try your best to, to, to just put it sweep it under the rug, but you can't anymore. You gotta, you gotta find out what's going on out there and, and figure out what the best leverage you have. Because it's, it's we're in uncharted waters right now. It's, it's so different. So we gotta figure out what can we do, what we can't do, and, and take advantage of it. Every leverage is gonna, is gonna matter now because it's, it's so different. So we just can't sit back and make excuses. We just gotta find, find the windows that we can gain some leverage. What's next? to you over this past year? Guys gravitate to him. Um, he's, he's, he's a guy that shows up and just works. Very compliant, 
um, has a lot of pride of doing things the right way. So it is invaluable to have someone like that because it's important for the young guys to see that. And uh, you can be as talented, but if you don't show up, you're not good. You know, so you're no good. So he's he's doing a great job of taking taking advantage of that leadership role, and um, we're going to need it. Have you pushed Thule at all in terms of being more vocal? I know it's just not his vibe and just not no. his style. Have you tried to no. grow him in that way, or are you just I happy with him to get his just just raise his level of play even more? That's that's the best way for the guys to follow. Um, he shows up early, the guy shows up early. He leaves early, the guy leaves early. So I don't need him to to yell and so just just raise it, raise his game. Coming to a program like USC that has incredible tradition and expectations to win every year, and they go four and eight, you know, do you come into a team that you feel like you have to build back up, confidence, swagger? That's a word that Kalen used. Is this is a team that. Yeah, yeah it, it's nothing like seeing guys yeah. with, with confidence and, and, and the ability to go out there and, and have clear eyes. You know, so it's 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 important for us to push these guys, but at the same time not break them down. So you gotta encourage them, but at the same time, you cannot lower the standard for the swagger. You know, it, it's gotta go hand in hand. The real good swagger comes when you're when you're performing at a high level. So it's you need swagger. When a guy comes in from Oklahoma, Litnikoff from Pittsburgh, you know, all these successful players, is that something that can be brought in and almost kind of like, uh, you know, if they did lose it, they can maybe be able to get it from these players who are coming from these great programs? And, well, even those players, they, 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 you know, the past is the past. You still want to see them, you know, they still have put in the work. And, and, and yes, it is very influential. You know, they're going to have a big influence on why were, why were those the players. And that why is, is going to be the, the big reason why our young players are going to follow. So, um, not hopefully. I, I know they're working their butts off and, and, and everybody's doing their way. What are you looking to see in the first week or so of fall camp, you know, before pads and stuff come on from your from your guys? Man, just pure aggression. Just empty the tank. It's, we're not going into this thing like, oh, we got to make sure we save, we don't have depth. we got to get their bodies and their minds to a level that they're like, holy crap, this is what we got to get to. Don't worry about being broken down. It, they're young. They're young. We're, we're all young ones, right? <laughs> so they're, they're, they can handle a lot of the ingredients. We need to. We need to, to, to push their, their bodies and their mind in a different level. So the first week of camp, I'm, I'm excited to push them. You know, when they think they got nothing left, that's when we got to step in and say, no, your tank is not even half. So it's, that's what I'm excited about. Every generation thinks the next generation of kids, you can't coach them as hard, you can't push them in the way that previous generations could be pushed. What is your philosophy in terms of coaching them hard, pushing them? If they have a clear understanding of what it takes to win, then, then that hard is not hard, in my opinion. You know, it's now there's a difference between pushing hard and demeaning them. We're not going to demean them. Yeah. We're going to inspire them. But if they have a clear understanding of what it takes, then they're going to understand that right, that that first step was wrong. Right? Wrong is wrong. Right is right. So um, we we you can't coach this this game any other way than 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 the proper way of just. It's hard. It's a hard game, and you gotta you gotta push them that way. Do you feel like they've embraced that in the time that you've starting, been here? I mean, they're starting to understand. They're starting to understand that that's that this is what it takes, and it's our job to to make it fun. But the real fun when you win comes when you win. You know, it just it can't be all fun. There's there's a level of you know, it was interesting. I talked to Linda White one time when he was here. After talking to him, I left and said, Linda White really thought he was better than Reggie Bush. <laughs> you know what I mean? He really thought he was And I thought that was awesome. It was awesome. I was like, man, could you imagine the practices? And that's what we want. You know, we want everybody to think that they can do it. They can be the guy. So it, it was awesome talking to him. Those were the absolute best oh. practices 
Physical violence. I, I bet you they didn't complain about it. You know, so and, and, and I think we're good. Coach Riley is doing a great job of creating that competitive environment. That every drill, every team, it, it's it's competitive. There's, there's something that you work towards. What have you seen from Solomon Bird? Uh, when he was coming in from the portal and what he's done Very on the team. athletic. But, you know, he's, he's a lot more athletic than I thought. You know, it's like, man, how did this guy end up in Wyoming? So maybe he was raw when he was coming out, but he has the, the size, the length, and, you know, the, he, and he has the, the smarts, too. So we're very excited about Solomon Bird. What kind of role do you picture for him with the team? Same as everybody's role. Like, he, he's got to fight for a spot and, 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 and push the, the envelope for everybody else. And then at the end, we'll see he, we need him to push some of the, the other guys. Yeah. When you're looking at, at portal additions, what's the process like in terms of film, calling people? How, how does that work? Well, we can't call them. No, I mean, like, people who might know, you know, guys who may have coached them in high school. Yes, yes, you want to find out every information. Because first, you want to make sure that they have the character that fits our culture. You know, you want to make sure that they're they're unselfish, hungry players. That so you got to call their high school coaches, some of the you know coaches that are at the same school that you're concerned about, and try to get every information that is valuable for us to make sure that he's a fit. And every word we heard from uh, Solomon, he was a great young man, very mature. Is there an honor code? amongst coaches when you ask for the real story on a player because you know when we deal with high school coaches they they all want to promote their players they yes. want all of their players to be a great this and a great yes. that but is there kind of an understanding that if someone's not a fit for you guys you kind of expect to be told that or expect yeah it makes it so much easier if they're honest you know if, if there's any uh outside motive of why they want their guys to to, to get high offers and stuff if we do our due diligence, you can you can see that it doesn't match up. You gotta make sure that their story matches with the kids' story, the family story. And then we always end up making the final decision based on that. But um, unfortunately, there's some coaches out there that push you know hard, but it's still our responsibility as coaches to make sure that we make sure every stone is turned. And in a transfer situation, where your window of time to do all of that is it's almost small. non-existent. Yeah. What, I mean, just maybe Solomon as an example, but can yes. you give an example of just the 72 hours or the 48 hours or how? Whenever you get your hands on them and you get a, a chance to talk to them in person, every word matters, you know, every action matters. So it's, it's you don't have a window, oh, we'll, we'll see him again next time. No, this, this might be it. So you gotta make sure that you, you um, take your notes and make sure you take advantage of that little window because it, it's hard, like you say. And it's not easy. It is not easy, but you still got to do your job. So the questions, instead of coming from, well, what are your hobbies? You might cut out those questions and cut straight to the meat, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's even the questions you ask them, there's no more, um, oh, what do you like to eat? No, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you got to get right to the point because the window is smooth. Is that good or bad? Does that, does that make it more kind of professional? Just, You're looking only about you know, the performance on that? Yeah, that's why I said maybe you do have to ask them one question to make sure. But you've got, you've got it's almost like you got to let yourself be vulnerable so they can see you as a person too, as fast as possible, so they can see okay, I can trust this. Because we're evaluating, they're evaluating us too, you know. So it's 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 very important for us to make sure that they know who we are as people first, and then as coaches, and we that can we develop them as players and men. So. Um, it's a two-way street. And for, for 50 years of college football coaches' interviews, it's all been about continuity. And here's who we have coming back, and camaraderie, and you know, we all buy into each other and all that kind of stuff. Well, now, in this era, it's like, can you play? You know, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Has that kind of taken you know, the idea of consistency, continuity? Does that kind of drop in this day and age where now it's more just pure talent? And that kind of rises to the top? I still believe that there's it's, it's chemistry to me is huge. You know, you must, I mean, we've seen a lot of talented players on the teams, and it doesn't pan out. It might pan out for that one player, but as a team, as a whole, it doesn't work. So we still want to make sure that he's a person that could fit in our culture. You know? you know, USC has a great lineage of Polynesian Pacific Islander, Samoan football yeah. players, and 
I'm curious, you know, getting to recruit, you know, from that particular kind of kid to this kind of school is, has always just been a good fit. You know, tell me about that role that you can play in that regard and, and how important that can be at a place like USC. See, I always, when a coach calls me and hires me because I'm Polynesian, I get turned off right away. Mm -hmm. I want him to hire me because I'm the best D line coach out there. And when I come here, is there an advantage of me, of a Polynesian? Yeah, there is. But if you look at the whole Pac 12, every single one of those teams has a Polynesian. So I rely on my skills as a coach that I got to gain their trust and I can develop their young men as the best football player possible and the best young men. So it's, it's, it has a role, but um, there's problems with everywhere now. Back to it. So I'm just curious with NIL and the new transfer rules and everything, if you were the commissioner of college football, mm -hmm. what would be the one or two things you would love to change or a rule you'd like to see or a rule you'd like to see go away? What, what, where would you start when you look at the state of the game? Man, you guys are asking good questions. And I might get in trouble for this. <laughs> Those are the best ones. But I would hammer the NCAA as hard as possible. Get freaking active even more. You know, get control of this damn situation. Do something. You know, so if I was commissioner, that's where I'd probably live in their facilities. <laughs> Dang, I hope that's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're. I think you were good. Yeah. I think you're. I think you're good there. Um, Coach Simmons talked about maybe what you were saying earlier too about how, in the day and age of a new guy is here, and maybe you're going to coach him for nine months, and that's the nine months you're going to get with him. You lose the relationships that go on for years and years and years because maybe they transfer and you can't talk to them. You're not allowed to do that. Do you feel that that loss is bigger than what you're gaining by the, the players being able to have the freedom of movement? That's why I always go back to culture. If your culture is strong enough and very, very um, good enough to have a proven track record that you can develop that kid, you got to make it really, really hard for that kid to find another culture that's better than ours. And if they leave, you still want to you still want to have a good relationship. That's that's what it's all about. You know, it's you wish them luck and then, you know. But if you have a strong culture, that should not even be an option. You talk about the prevalence of Polynesian coaches, obviously, in Pac-12 and very strong. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the pipeline of Polynesian coaches ascending to head coach positions? And there are a lot of assistant coaches that we haven't gotten a chance to see a lot of Polynesian head coaches yet. We're coming. <laughs> we're heading there. But um, we're just grateful for the opportunity that we have as, as even position coaches. Just to be in this position is a huge honor. And if, if we are qualified to get there, then if we work hard enough to get there, then that's even more of a, a big honor. But uh, I'm just grateful for who I am now, what I have. In your future, would you like to be a head coach? In the future, <laughs> I hope we have a really good camp. This <laughs> That's my future. Right now. I can't look past that. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, Stanley's a guy who came in as a, as a linebacker, got shifted up, and he just keeps kind of plugging along and <laughs> started last year and mm -hmm. had a good spring. What, what have you seen from him? What is it about him that, that's enabled him? Grit, to toughness. Um, he, he has so much pride in himself uh, of not being a, just an average player. That's, that's it right there. He just loves to work hard. Tuli said he's a guy that he actually looks up to. I mean, if I would go to an, in, in, a, in a bar fight somewhere, I'm taking Stanley. Yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys.